A common set of films many of us have seen which depict a type of amnesia are Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Finding Dory is an addition to the story presented in Finding Nemo, where a clownfish enlists the help of a fish who states she has short-term memory loss. Finding Dory covers the backstory of this royal blue tang and talks about her quest to find her parents after she was separated from them as a child. Although basic forgiving, forgetting is common among all of us, Dory appears to have an extra difficult time remembering. Let's start with the things that the films got right. In Finding Nemo, it appears that Dory has anterior grade amnesia. She's not able to remember new events. This type of amnesia is commonly caused by a traumatic brain injury. It is possible, though unlikely, to develop this amnesia in other ways, and in Finding Dory, we see that Dory has dealt with this since she was a child. She is not able to store new information. When she meets Marlin in Finding Nemo, she seems to be like a child in an adult's body. Dory loves swimming and playing and can't seem to recall where she's been or what she is doing. She has difficulty in her development as she cannot learn new things. These films show many symptoms often exhibited in real life examples of amnesia like patient HM. In one session, we see HM repeating himself multiple times throughout the same interview. Dory also does this. She frequently has to ask Marlon what they're doing and where they're going. An interesting insight into amnesia is that individuals can still maintain their motor skills. For example, Dory loves jumping on the jellyfish in Finding Nemo and appears to be quite good at it. Amnesia occurs in the hippocampus and affects memory, while motor skills are the function of the four main lobes. In other words, even if Dory doesn't remember how she learned to jump on jellyfish, she still has the ability to do so. Another key point shown in these films that is often exaggerated in other films about memory loss is her ability to remember her name and the very basic, part, and the very basic parts of who she is. In terms of amnesia, we forget the things that we most recently learned first, and the very first things we learned, like our name for example, would be the very last things to get lost. Dory very clearly remembers her name and in some ways where she comes from, which is completely accurate. We can especially see this in Finding Dory. In Finding Nemo, everything is relatively new to Dory. She goes to the same seaweed twice and doesn't realize that she hasn't moved. However, when she goes back to the aquarium and is in the same spots she grew up in, she recognizes where she is. In anterior grade amnesia, you are likely to remember things before the amnesia much better. Although it is not clear when Dory gets amnesia, she appears to have been able to encode basic information about her past before she gets it. However, this could also be an inaccuracy in the film. If Dory remembers where she came from now, she should always be able to remember that. In Finding Nemo, we see that she doesn't remember this information about her past. There are also some other things in the films that don't line up with modern science. For example, Dory shouldn't be able to store new information to create episodic memories. Yet in both films, Dory meets new people that she remembers quite well by the end of the film. Going back to HM, he was never really able to recognize new people after his accident. He would at times pretend that he remembered someone out of politeness, but it is obvious that his memory would fall short. Dory, on the other hand, remembers Nemo and Marlin even after she has been separated from them for a long time. One of the most important parts of each film is Dory's ability to remember a crucial detail when it is most important. In Finding Nemo, she remembers the address of Nemo's location, and in Finding Dory, she remembers the name of the exhibit she was raised in. This is highly unlikely for a person with anterior grade amnesia. It is extremely hard for them to learn new information. It does not appear to be difficult for Dory, or it does appear to be difficult for Dory, but in the end, it is always possible. Finally, it is not possible for patients with amnesia to have memories come back. When Dory returns in Finding Dory and reunites with her parents, we see memories coming back the closer and closer she gets to finding them. Unfortunately, these memories aren't able to be restored. It is, of course, a heartwarming extension to the films, but in terms of neuroscience, it's fairly inaccurate. Although there are some things wrong with the neuroscience of these films, they do an overall good job of showing the public what it might be like to interact with someone suffering from amnesia. In Finding Nemo, we experience the frustration with Marlin as he's looking for his son, but then in Finding Dory, we empathize a lot more with her and the fears she has about forgetting. Dory is an excellent example to viewers that we need to be kind and compassionate to others as we don't know their whole story and sometimes they don't either. There is a particularly, particularly climactic point where Marlin tells Dory to just leave and forget because that is what she does best anyways. Viewers see Dory and the disappointment she is experiencing for doing something she isn't even in control of. 
These films help you fall in love with Dory and her personality and make you want to be more patient to people that are different than you. I appreciate the messages shared within these films and I think we have a lot to learn from them. I think that these films can be related to one of the works of Borges entitled The Library of Babel. In the Library of Babel, there is a non-infinite library that in the measurements of mortal beings really does appear to be infinite. The appeal to this library is that you can find the key to all the world's knowledge. There are many people that drive themselves crazy trying to find these books that will unlock the mysteries of their lives before ultimately realizing that even if it is there, it is impossible to find. I linked the story with Finding Nemo and Finding Dory because Dory seems to be lost in one of these libraries. She's constantly searching for the right answers and trying to find her way around the infinite. For Dory, the ocean is infinite. In fact, because she has difficulty remembering, so is her little aquarium. The true success comes in the small moments, in the reading of these books, in the making of these friends. Just like in the Library of Babel, Dory must choose if she will keep searching forever for something that may not be able to be found, or if she will treasure the moment she has right now, which may be the secret to life after all. Dory chooses to be optimistic and happy amidst the unknown. It is as if, in the searching, she found herself, something I think we are all trying to do. Be like Dory and just keep swimming.